Master Tavern Keeper's History of the Old World. Well, neophytes, let us now turn our eyes southwards from the heart of the kingdom of Nagash to one of the wilder cities of Nehekara, the bazaar-filled city of Bagar. The city was famous for two things, spice and slaves, those two cash cows of the ancient world, and still commodities that are cornerstones of the economies of certain places. Like many of the city-states of our own Tylea here today in 1563, it was ruled over by merchant princes, coin and trade ruling the roost. But in spite of the uh, city's devotion to commerce, it was not the richest place in the land. The money poured out of the city as quickly as it poured in, flowing along the north-south road that both led down to the lands of Karsabar and the Gulf of Medes, and then back up north to Kemri, Numas and Zandri. But don't mistake me, it was still prosperous. But it was an uh, active prosperity, whose fortunes rose and fell like the dunes that surrounded the city herself. The people of Bagar, too, were equally as wild as the great desert that cradled them. They had once been part of the nomadic tribes that roamed the sandy ocean and were the antecedents of modern Arabians, renowned for their horses and their horsemanship. They claimed that the desert horse was a special breed, a gift from the faceless god of the desert wind, Kassar himself, and prized above all else by their riders. Their garb, too, reflected their heritage, and the typical citizen at the time could still be seen wearing the black desert robes and head wrappings of their cousins out in the dunes. The tribe that came to settle Magar were once the most successful bandits and thieves in the region. Opportunistic raiders that preyed on the Nehekaran caravans that moved from the rich, lush plains around Numas, Zandri and Kemri down to the south and out east. That was, of course, until the rise of Setra. He humbled the tribe, but rather than destroying them, he gifted them civilization and they were eventually incorporated into the great land, settling to found the city of Bagar. Although they were now settled, their horses remained the mainstay of their army and something for which they were equally famed as much as they were feared. As a result of this reputation though, other nomadic tribes gave the city a wide berth, as did some of the kings of the other cities. This reliance on the desert and their roaming army meant that Bagar never fortified itself against the possibility of a siege. It uh, simply wasn't necessary. The desert was their defense. However, this was perhaps not so prudent. As we talked about earlier, Exactly 1,950 years before the start of the imperial calendar, Nagash usurped the throne of Kemri and became its priest king, as well as remaining the grand hierophant of the mortuary cult of the city. And in this way, he also became ruler of all of Nehekara. Nine years into his reign, he 
he humbled the city of Zandri, his great rival. And after such a display, the other cities dared not rise up against Nagash. Over the next 200 years of his reign, he squeezed the country for resources in order to uh, construct his Black Pyramid. And during this time, Bagar too had much of her wealth siphoned away northwards towards the capital, Khemri. According to sources at the time, and we are now talking just about uh, before the rebellion began, it was ruled over by Prince Shahid ben al Ghazar, also known as the Red Fox. He was no friend to Nagash, but was not openly rebellious until the start of the war, at which time he actively supported the alliance of cities that opposed the priest king of Khemri at the behest of the king of the neighboring city of Kar Sabah. This resistance would not go unpunished, but we shall talk more of all that once we get into the war itself, which now nicely leads us to the city of Kar even further south than Bagar, and the home of arcane secrets and knowledge. It was one of the major city-states of ancient Nehekara, and oft where Kar led, others soon followed. Like Bagar, Kar too was hidden by the undulating dunes of the southern portion of the Great Desert. It was, uh, and still is, an ancient site, and the foundations of the city are covered in glyphs, carved before the coming of men to Nehekara. Okay, now, could I hazard a guess that these were the work of the servants of the old ones, perhaps? Ah, how very perceptive. Yes, I do believe that they are. Kazabar is very close to the jungles of the Southlands, which, neophytes, we know are the realm of the Lizardmen from our chat about the first expedition of Ibn Jalaba. Oh, and don't worry, we will be returning to his story and his second expedition, this time with the Lizardmen of the city of Zlatlan itself. Anyway, if you recall, Kazabar was also the city that Ibn Jalaba hailed from. And it was upon his return that he, too, realised that the ancient weather glyphs of the place of his birth were one in the same with the ones he had seen in the hidden city of the Slan. However, the prevailing belief amongst the Arabians who now occupy the city is that the glyphs were the work of the old gods. And to openly disagree with this would be to court heresy and receive a swift, sharp beheading, courtesy of the Sultan's chief executioner. However, Ibn had uh, no qualms about telling my tutor and I of his discovery whilst he was safe aboard our boat, the Ava Phantom. Anyway, let's get back to the city at the time of Nagash. During this period, Kasabar was known as the City of Bronze, and with good reason. It had grown rich and powerful by being the industrial centre of mining and smithing for all of Nehekara. In Kasabar, they made everything from locks, keys and belt buckles, to weapons, shields and armour. I remember distinctly a quote that Ibn read to us from a merchant of Kasabar writing at the time. There are cities that charm those I visit with their good looks, their rich tapestry of scenery, views of the great mountains or the sea, or with palm trees and lush plains. And then there are cities like Kasabar that have to work for a living, whose livelihood is based on fiery industry, doing dirty jobs at scolding furnaces, 
whose lights fight against the night and from whose working fires smoke blooms up high and chases away the wild things of the desert. Kasapa has its natural beauties, of course. The desert cradles her softly, but it is not the kind of city that people visit and fall in love with. We that live here are here for the challenge and the benefits of hard work. The toil at the furnaces of Kasabar bred a strong people. They were renowned for their strength and huge size, some nearly as tall as seven feet. And many sources said that their warriors had skin as hard as the ore that they smelted, strong enough that arrows shattered against it on the impact and spear tips were turned away. Thus, the army of Kasabar was formidable, as well as being well organized. It was known as the Legion of Bronze and led by the Ushabti of Geheb, who had the bodies of lions and were a terrifying sight on the battlefield. During the time leading up to the war and during the war itself, the city was led by King Akhmenhotep and Although at the start of the reign of Nagash, he was loyal to Khemri, the draining of resources to build the Great Black Pyramid and news of the nefarious goings-on of the usurper quickly led to Akhmenhotep turning against Nagash. And as a result, Kasabar was one of the first cities in the alliance against the Great Necromancer. But... I shall tell you all about that when we finally come to the war. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I'm uh, looking forward to it. But uh, right now, and I'm sorry to interject here, but uh, what you said about this city of Kasabar having been built upon the ruins of the old ones has uh, caught my interest. Is this city still occupied? I mean, uh, by the, uh, by the living... <laughs> Oh, yes, it most certainly is. Oh, yeah. So what kind of place is it now, then? Ah, a more contemporary tangent. I like it. Well, then, let us talk of the Arabian city of Kasabar, for it is yet different and yet in some ways similar to its ancient Neherkaran incarnation. But if we are to speak of Kasabar as she now exists, I insist that we all have a round of Arak. This stuff will put some hairs in your chest, let me warn you. But nonetheless, I uh, think we should all have a drink. I'll just pop upstairs and grab my bottle. Cedric, please break out the shot glasses. I'll be back in a jiffy. <laughs> 